Hello everyone and welcome back to Law Statistics. I hope you all are doing well. Today's presentation is based on the topic Complaint under the Code of Criminal Procedure 1973. So let's proceed towards the introduction part. The reporting about the commission of an offence is the first step to bring the proceedings in motion. The general impression is that the pr process of reporting of offence is filled with complexities. As per procedural laws, information about crime can be given by anyone who may not necessarily be the victim. The word complaint has a wider scope since it includes oral allegation too. Therefore, it can be concluded that there is no specific format for filing a complaint. It must only contain an allegation that prime facie discloses commission of an offence concerning the facts. A complaint can be filed in both offences, may be cognizable and non-cognizable. It is to be focused that complaint is made only to the magistrate and not a judge. The complaint is basically defined under Section 2 Clause D of the Code of Criminal Procedure as an allegation made orally or in writing to a magistrate with a view to his taking action under the Code that some person, whether known or unknown, has committed an offence but does not include a police report. The explanation to this provision states that when a report made by police after investigation discloses that a non-cognizable offence has been committed, then such report shall be deemed to be a complaint and the police officer who made the report will be deemed to be the complainant. Moving ahead. Section 200 provides for the examination of the complainant. When the complaint has been made verbally, the magistrate shall examine the complainant and witnesses on oath. It should be reduced to writing, signed by the complainant, witnesses and the magistrate. If the complaint has been made in writing by a public servant acting in the discharge of his duties, where magistrate has put the case before the magistrates for inquiry or trial under Section 192, there is no need to examine the complainant and witness. In Ramesh Bhai Pundurao Hedan v. State of Gujarat, the Supreme Court has held that a protest petition filed against a police report made under Section 173 may be treated as a complaint under Section 200 and proceeded under Section 202. Protest petition is not defined in CRPC. It is an opportunity for the victim to raise an objection against the police report. Protest petition if the magistrate acquits the accused on the ground that he had no jurisdiction to take cognizance, then such acquittal will be illegal. Section 202 Postponement of Issues of Process It states that on receipt of complaint which he is authorized to take cognizance of or which has been made over to him under Section 192. Under the inquiry by magistrate, he may take evidence of witnesses on oath and in case of offence exclusively triable by session courts, he is under obligation to call upon the complainant to produce all his witnesses for examining them on oath. Where the investigation is carried out by a person other than a police officer, he shall have the same powers of investigation conferred under this code, except the power to arrest without warrant. After investigation, the police officer is bound to report his findings to the magistrate. If the magistrate is satisfied that there are sufficient grounds for the issue of process, then he may summon the accused. Moving ahead, if the magistrate is of opinion that there is no sufficient ground for further proceedings, he shall also dismiss the complaint after recording his reasons for the same. An order for dismissal of a complaint is neither an order of discharge nor an order for acquittal. Thus, the principle laid in the maxim autrefois convict or autrefois acute embodied in section 300 of the code is not applicable here, said the Patna High Court in Ram Narayan v. Panchat Jain. After taking cognizance of an offence upon a complaint made to him, under Section 190, the magistrate proceeds under Chapter 15 of the Code of Criminal Procedure, which provides the process preparatory to trial. That's all for today's presentation. Thank you and have a great day ahead.